In our next um, uh, special revenue recognition situation, we will look at build and hold arrangements. In this case, these are the contracts under which um, an entity will bill a customer for a product, but the customer cannot take physical possession at, until sometime in the future. However, the customer does take the title and accept the billing. Here's a specific example. Butler Company sold 450000 worth of fireplaces on March 1st to a local coffee shop, Baristo. As Baristo is building new coffee shops, it will be picking up the fireplaces when the new buildings are ready. Title passes to Baristo at the time the agreement is signed. We need to decide when should Butler recognize the revenue from this arrangement. We'll have to determine then um, when the, the, the satisfaction of the performance application actually happens or when Baristo obtains control of the product. Let's take a look. In order to obtain, obtain control, we have to make sure all of the conditions for the change in the control are met plus all of the following criteria. The reasons for the bill and hole arrangement must be substantive, so they should make sense why it's happening so we're not doing it on purpose. The product must be identified separately as it belongs to Barista. So for example, if the, fire, uh, if the fireplaces are sitting in the warehouse, we should have them particularly set away as the ones marked for Barista. And Butler cannot have the ability to use these uh, fireplaces uh, or direct them to another customer. So basically, if we are short in the fireplaces, we cannot pick up baristos and so sell them to another customer. In this case, it appears that all the criteria are met, and therefore the revenue recognition should be permitted at the time the contract is signed. So we will have the following journal entry. On March 1st, as we sign the contract, Butler will debit accounts receivable and credit sales revenue, so sales occurred, and also make um, another journal entry for the reduction in inventory and cost of goods sold. How about we'll take a look at the principal and agent relationship. Um, agent's performance obligation is to arrange for the principal to provide um, goods or services to a customer. So a few examples. Preferred travel company agent facilitates booking of the cruise for Regency Cruise Company, which is considered to be a principal. Or a lot of you know the Priceline Company that acts as an agent to facilitate sales of various uh, products for car rentals such as Hertz that will be a principal in this case. The amounts collected on behalf of the principals are not revenue to the agent. Revenue is only the amount of commission received. Or as sometimes they will say, they will have to recognize net revenue and not the gross, not the full amount. What about consignments? Manufacturers or wholesalers deliver goods but retain the title to the goods until it is sold. So consignor or manufacturer ships merchandise to consignee, the dealer or middleman, who acts as an agent for the consignor. Consignor makes profit on the sale, carries merchandise as inventory because it retains the title, and then consignee makes a commission on the sale. Um, hmm. Unfortunately... I have to apologize, one of the slides got corrupted as I uh, brought it in and to explain everything, and I have to go to plan B and uh, import another slide. So that's what the slide should look like. Uh, let's take a look at Nelba, that ships merchandise costing 36000 on consignment to best value. Nelba also pays freight, and a based value pays roughly $2,000 for local advertising cost that will be reimbursable by Nelba. By the end of the period, Best Value has sold two-thirds of the product for $40,000 cash and it notifies Nelba and retains 10% commission. 
and that sends the cash due to Nelba. Let's take a look at all the journal entries. At first, Nelba transfers uh, merchandise from finished goods into inventory on consignment for $36,000. That was the cost. And there's no journal entry related on the best value side. And then as the shipment done to best value, you have to include that extra shipping cost as cost of consigned inventory. That's why the same account is used again. Now cost for that consigned inventory roughly becomes almost $40,000 at this point. Okay, let's take a look. What about payment for the advertising? If you remember, um, best value has to pay for advertising, but it's not their expense since it will be reimbursed by Nelba. That's why you have a receivable from consignor. And then when the sale of consigned merchandise occurs, cash will be collected by um, best value, and we have a payable due to consignor. Now here is this ginormous journal entry, so let's take a look um, step by step. When the notification of sales arrives, Nelba will record revenue from consigned sale for $40,000. They also will recognize advertising expense because we need to, they need to reimburse consignee for those. And they will record commission expense, if you remember, that was 10% of revenue. And then the net amount, 33750 is actually collected in cash. What about on the consignee side? They will take off the book, so debit payable to consignor for 40000 Then also, we will have to take off the books, the receivable, because we will be reimbursed for the advertising. We will record commission revenue, 10%, and again, the same net amount of cash, 33750 It must be exact match because it's the same check that was written. So we have to have an agreement between the two parties on the books. And then we'll need to do one more journal entry on Nelba's books because we have to release our inventory on consignment two-thirds of the cost, total cost that was recorded is now sold, so we have to record it as cost of goods sold. And there's no entry needed on the consignee side. All right. Warranties. You might remember that we already used the warranty examples in the earlier chapters when we did warranty expenses. It's just a reminder for you. Um, recall we have two types of warranty. One is assurance type that is included in the sale price. And then we could provide also additional service not included in the sale, and that is considered to be service type warranty. So service type warranty will be recorded as a separate performance obligation. All right, let's take a look at this example. Maverick Company sold a um, thousand Rollomatics on October 1st, 2020 for six million dollars with a warranty that the product will be free of defect. The cost is four million. The term of this assurance type warranty is two years, so I put the exact dates for you. We have two year assurance warranty, estimated cost of um, 80000 In addition, Maverick sold extended warranty related to 400 um, Rollomatics for three years beyond the two year period. And I have to apologize, it's a three year, so I kind of shortened by a year up here. I will have to correct it right now and I'll put it as a year to 2025. Now we have uh, three years. Um, what else? On November 22, 2020, Maverick incurred labor cost 3,000 parts 25 related to the insurance type warranty because it was during this period. And then Maverick prepares financial statements at the end of this year, 2020. It also estimates that future insurance warranty cost will be 44000 going into the next year. Please recall that the service type warranty, when it finally kicks in, starting on October 1st, 2022, uh, it, the revenue will be recognized as revenue on uh, um, through a simple amortization basis. So let's take a look. 
the journal entry in the, on October 1st, 2020 was sold for cash, six million worth of product, and then 18,000 worth of service type warranty. Uh, there is no additional charge for assurance type warranty because it is included in the six million. And here's your 18,000 recorded as of now on earned warranty revenue because we cannot do anything until two years from now. So as of now, it is our liability. And then once the year 2022 arrives on December of 2022, we will recognize, so it will be October, November, December, three months out of 36 months because we have a three-year service type warranty as actually your service revenue. Okay, we also need to reduce our inventory by four million and record cost of goods sold. What about additional warranty cost or work that we had to do based on the insurance type warranty? Recall that there was labor char charges and then we had to use inventory parts. Both of them constitute warranty expense. And then at the end of the year, we have to accrue um, or recognize an additional warranty liability because our estimate will be for an extra $44,000. So that will be an additional warranty expense and warranty liability. Okay, what about non-refundable upfront fees? Those are payments from customers before the delivery of the product of promise of services and generally relate to insta installation, activation, or setup that will be provided or performed in the future. In most cases, those upfront payments are non-refundable. And examples include membership fee in the health club or activation fee for the phone, internet, um, or cable. 